Hello, traders. So what I explained above using the macro and the micro time frames, one to create a bias, another to utilize that bias for an entry point. I'm going to show you a trade from the green room uh, in NVIDIA on the five minute chart. And I'm looking at the weekly chart here just to show the extent of where this came from. This is pre-split, uh, split 10 for one about a week or so ago. Uh, but it started out here out at the bottom of this basing consolidation and this igniting move had a big move, started to correct another extended move. All right, so let's now go down to the daily time frame. Now there's nothing to the left here, meaning in the explanation above, we're looking for a resistance or supply area where sellers are going to be. Well, that could be one criteria, great if it's there, or prices have just gotten so extended that they're likely to reverse. Two things to be looking for is acceleration, that accelerated, and then it continued the acceleration and the last one even bigger, and then it gapped up, it gapped up on this day. Now, could it continue to go higher? Yeah, of course. So we need to have some evidence of our bias actually taking hold. So from the higher time frame, macro time frame, we see that NVIDIA was extended, it, acceler it accelerated higher, and then it gapped significantly higher the next day to a whole number around 140 bucks right there. So this now provides us at least a starting bias that NVIDIA is likely to retrace at that point. How far is it gonna retrace? We really don't know. Now we look at a prior bar's high as being an area of support and somewhere inside of that bar would be some support. Um, let's just clean this up for a second here. Get rid of some of these lines. All right, here we go. All right. So again, what we're reviewing here is just creating a bias and you know, this little shelf right there where these bars overlap is probably more support. Now, you can see that price is cut right through that, but again, we don't know what's going to happen in the moment. So we have to look for high probability points where prices could reverse. All right, so now let me go to the five minute time frame. I'm going to show you the bias, but what I'm going to show you is what I actually used instead of NVIDIA, I used this leveraged instrument which is twice the leverage of use of utilizing the actual stock so most of the time these leverage ones are going to be uh, a lower price but you're getting twice the margin so for intraday they're ideal for, for utilizing that so the prices are different the patterns are the same prices accelerated higher um gapping up into that area up there, significant size gap, you can see. And so now we scroll down and wait. And so here was the beginning of trouble right here. Where prices went sideways, those are five minute bars, went sideways for 10 minutes, they broke out and immediately began to come back in again. A more aggressive person could have utilized that because failure patterns display failed expectations. So this gapped up and initially it looked okay from an intraday trading point of view. Why? Well, because you have what we call an end of day base. So it consolidated at the end of the day for a couple of hours or so. So the gap up is not as much of a concern. Um, however, the daily chart being extended and the potential for an exhaustion gap is different than if prices had, say, gapped up you know, over here you know, from this consolidation on the daily chart or after a resting period. This was after, again, the accelerated move and then the potential exhaustion gap. So... Nonetheless, 
two five minute bars going sideways, bottoming tail bottoming tail bars there. You can see bottoming tail bars, buyer stepping up on the dip, and they broke out higher, and it begins to waver. Still nothing wrong until it actually starts to break. Now, when it begins to break, you have to decide, well, where are buyers likely to step up? And an obvious place is right here in the area of the unfilled gap. And so they did. Now, the entry point that I utilized was as this formed a pivot and it came into where it broke down from. I suspect there's going to be sellers in that area. Then once it forms a pivot high, which is defined by a bar with three lower highs to the left and right, I know there's a resistance area. Once it retests that, it's beginning to form a stronger resistance area. Now at that point, it could have gone up but it didn't, so I'm still waiting. And then it forms another pivot high, three lower highs to the left and the right. And now you can see, you should see, what is, was beginning to form and what caught my eye that day was this five minute head and shoulders topping pattern. So the entry point was on the break of the neckline, okay, basic head and shoulders pattern analysis, um, there was your support and it began, that was the entry. Now, the expectation, my expectation was it was going to break below this line here. Well, why would that be if it's support and is a pivot low? Because of the concept of a greater than 100% retracement, once you have weakness and prices start to roll over like this, historically, the probability is that prices are going to violate this low. And there was another, you know, the stronger support down here. I'm trying to draw that line, but it's not working for me. Anyway, it's right, right down there. So where was my exit? On this bar. And you say, well, why? It, it kept going down. Well, I don't know that it's going to keep going down. But after a greater than 100% retracement and a wide range bar, and wide range bars after prices have been moving down for a period of time, multiple bars, historically, the momentum is likely to stall. Well, it didn't. Well, it kind of did. You see these bars overlapping here. There was some reaction there, and then it continued to move lower, and it retraced, and it continued to go lower. And while it, you might think that, hey, if I could hold on to this whole move, you know, great. Do you have a plan to hold on to the whole move? I didn't at the time. My expectation was this daily chart was still in an uptrend. Yes, exhaustion gap. It was likely to come down and so on, but it moved a lot further than historically what it might. Now, other things that may have been coming into play, uh, this was a quarterly options expiration. There was NVIDIA being moved into an index and Apple coming out. So there's some underlying things, but that really isn't part of our analysis that happens on every single day. We have to utilize what we do utilize. And so the idea being that greater than 100% retracement, a wide range bar, historically odds are that the momentum is going to stall. Clearly it didn't, right? Not in a big way, a little bit and kept going down. Nonetheless, what I'm sharing with you today is a way to trade against the trend at the appropriate times when things are likely to reverse and then using a smaller time frame for your entry point and your management. Can you utilize this in the opposite way? Meaning if prices were going down for a long period of time and then gap lower and begin to stabilize? Absolutely. You, things will begin to stabilize in a similar way where, well, this isn't really the pattern, but you can see uh, a pivot and then a retest. Things begin to stabilize like that. But the daily chart was just starting to move down, whereas say this was comes down for a few days, let's just say next week, if this keeps coming down in, into the area of this pivot low, and maybe it gaps down into that area. Now we start looking for intraday patterns on the five minute chart, right, for this for example, to trade against the prevailing trend on this intraday time frame. And here, while this would still be in an uptrend, well, if it came down there at that point, the depth of retracement, this being major support, this would be uh, turned into a sideways trend.
Nonetheless, I hope you've gotten the idea of how to trade against the trend at the appropriate time. And this example was for intraday trading, but we could still use this for swing trading using a weekly and daily time frame. Um, you see my NYSE tick indicator down here at the bottom. This is measuring you know, what's happening intraday as far as um, from a broader market perspective. This internal gauge tells me how many stocks are trading on upticks versus downticks and you know, what type of day it is. Is it a neutral day? Is it a more negative day, a more positive day? Um, that's for another discussion. Anyway, if you have any questions, email me, greg at MasterTrader.